when I used to hunt with my dad, he always came in the bedroom there and he got me up about the crack of dawn. I always hated that. And uh, anymore, I don't have, I don't get out to about nine o'clock. Uh, just about every day. Uh, I can do that since I, I lost my job at the butcher shop. You know, the manager down there, they expect you to kiss ass all the time. And, you know, here I am in the back trying to do my job, cut up some meat, and the customers come up front, and, you know, they'd have to wait for a couple minutes, and they'd be in a hurry, and they'd go to the management and complain, and they just they just don't understand that, that, you know, you're just not there waiting like a puppy for them to come to the counter so you give them some meat. They just They just don't understand. After I, I get up in the morning, I usually uh, get dressed and go in the kitchen and uh, fix my lunch, whatever's in the lay around. Uh, my wife used to fix my lunch, but uh, she left. She was, she really didn't understand me, and she didn't understand hunting. She was too demanding. I guess she was kind of like the people down at the butcher shop. They all want me to kiss their ass. I don't kiss ass. You have to mentally prepare yourself for a day's hunt. Uh, and I always check out my bow. I gotta make sure it's perfect so that it, it, it functions perfectly. You have to have an intimate relationship with your bow if you want it to, to perform perfectly. I think my wife was jealous of my bow. Hunting is about being out in nature, being one with nature. You're out in the woods, you're in the, the sunshine, and the, you're smelling the air, listening to the sounds out there. It's just beautiful out there. And, uh, and hopefully, something comes along I can shoot at. <laughs> a lot of people hunt with uh, shotguns and rifles, but uh, that's not too much of a challenge. You know, as a kid, my dad uh, gave me a, a rifle with a scope on it. You know, an eight-year-old kid can go out and point something and, and shoot what he's aiming at, but uh, it's real that wears off pretty soon. You, it just, it gets to be too easy. And, uh, the thrill of everything wears off eventually, but but there's always something to replace it. <laughs> I guess in a few years, hell, I'll be hunting with my bare hands. First thing I do when I'm out in the woods is I, I look for a pretty straight tree. And so once I find it, well, find a tree, I strap on my pole climbers, you know, like the telephone guys use. I just walk right up the tree. It's, it's easy, no problem at all. You just stick the little spikes in. And then once you once you get up there about 20 feet, you take the pole, the uh, tree stand there, strap it on, hang it on the tree. Real simple. Then when I get ready to hunt, when you're all set up, you just pull the bow up on a string. You don't want to climb with the with the bow because you don't want to fall on a bunch of sharp arrows. It's too dangerous. You can sit up there and it's like you're just disappearing with the tree. You're part of the tree. For most people, the the hardest part of hunting is the waiting part, but uh, it's really not. You just gotta sit there and be real quiet. You, you just play little mind games. You just have to have a, a creative mind. I pretty usually think about my dad and all the times that we went hunting. I remember hunting with him probably from about the time I could walk. He used to take me squirrel hunting. That's where I first learned to hunt. We, he used to take me out squirrel hunting. And, uh, it was my turn to clean them. Man, man, I was nervous. Trying to remember everything Dad ever taught me about cleaning a squirrel. So he hands me his knife, and my hands are all shaking there. And I put the knife about where he, he put it on the squirrel, and I start cutting a little bit, just a little at a time, and get down there towards his belly, and the knife slips in, and I just cut the guts all up in that squirrel. Just They were just all over the place. It looked like Cuisinart. And I don't know what that squirrel ate for breakfast. It stank so bad. I mean, it just almost make you puke. But that pissed Dad off pretty good. He got all mad and took a knife away from me and said, 
See a squirrel, son? This is not how you clean a squirrel. Took my head and he just put my nose right down that squirrel guts. And I just puked up my guts. But you know what? I ever shot every time I ever shot a squirrel after that, I never messed up cleaning one. Never. <laughs> my dad was a good teacher. Yeah, dad had a quick temper, but uh, he had a gentler side too. Remember this one spring we were out hunting turkeys and uh we walked through the woods and we camp on this little little fawn that uh we caught a bear trap. Somebody put a bear trap on our property. We didn't hunt bear. I thought Dad was gonna be all pissed, but uh he wasn't. He just ran right over that little deer and he pulled out his pistol and he blew its brains out. I knew it was illegal to hunt deer in the spring, but uh you know, he said he did just to put it out of its misery. Once you shoot and hit, you got to sit back down and wait. Uh, if you get up and chase them right away, that son of a bitch will run forever. You'd be surprised on how far they'll run on terror alone. But um, after the initial shock of being hit fades, they usually collapse from the pain. Yeah, sure I miss my dad. Uh, he died in a hunting accident when I was 15. He just dropped me off on uh, Poston Road on the other side of the wildlife preserve and uh, he was going to drive around the other side and uh, I was going to walk across the property and drive all the deer to him so he could kill two or three. And uh, I walked across and uh, got the truck and uh, he wasn't there. Uh, they found his body in a ditch about a week later and uh, I guess somebody must have mistook him for a deer. You know, something like this would probably make somebody want to quit hunting, but uh, I couldn't really let his passion and his teaching die. I think he'd be proud of me. Once you climb down is the fun part tracking. It's kind of like Sherlock Holmes. You look for clues and you find the trail. Usually you walk over to where you think you hit them and you start looking for clues, mainly blood. You can tell a lot about how you hit them from the blood trail. If the, if the blood's all foamy, you hit them in the lungs. You got like big big clots in it, it's usually a, an artery hit or a, a heart hit. And then sometimes if you don't see much of a trail at all, you probably gut shot them. They'll run for miles if they've been gut shot. When you finally come up on him, you got to be careful. If he's got any strength left and you startle him, he'll bolt. You're supposed to just wait back and wait for him to die. I like my dad. I like to put him out of misery as soon as possible.